Gentlemen, if you think that Fiona is looking absolutely stunning, let me hear you clap and roar. <laughs> and if you think that James is looking very handsome and dashing. That was a great roar, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, we're all gathered here for a lovely, lovely um, event in the lives of Fiona and James, and indeed in your um, lives as well, as we gather to celebrate their marriage. And uh, Fiona and James, you were keen, weren't you, to make sure that all of your guests kind of felt part of this happy and joyous occasion. Uh, and I wanted you all to feel part of it, all right? Uh, and guests have, I have to say, you all look really well. <laughs> you know, you, you really don't, they look really well, you know. Um, guests have traveled from all over the place to be here right now in this room. Who has come from Australia? Hello, Australia. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I should ask, by the way, can you hear me at the back? Yes. You can. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm closer to you, so I assume you can. Very good. And who's come from Amer the US of A? Trump land. <laughs> and Singapore. Yeah. Hello, Singapore. <laughs> and Germany. And England. There'll be a great party later tonight. <laughs> Dublin. <laughs> Check the bar. <laughs> Ross Common. <laughs> Southern Capital Cork <laughs> and Kerry <laughs> I've just one thing I really have to check I want to check the volume between England and Kerry so let's start with England <laughs> It's a draw. Okay, I'm biased. I think England won. <laughs> One way that Fiona and James want to involve each of you in a very, very personal way in this, their marriage ceremony is that Lee, the best man, he has the rings, the marriage bands on you, don't you? Did he? he didn't leave them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And what we're going to do is we're going to pass the wedding bands around amongst each and every one of you during the ceremony. 
right? And the idea is that so when you're holding Fiona and James's wedding bands, have a moment with the rings to wish them everything that you want for them in their married lives ahead. And if you're religious, feel free to say a silent prayer, okay? <laughs> and then you pass them to the person beside you. Now, because of the shape of the room, what we'll do is we we'll just we we'll start it over there, and the rings will work back there. So whoever ends up with them there, you know, have a, maybe one of you two young fellas might, yeah? And, and just pass it back to the best man, and he'll take, and then they'll start at the back and they'll come back, all right? And the idea is that by the time we get to the exchange of rings, they will come strengthened by your best wishes for Fiona and James. So we'll start that off now, and that'll go on while the ceremony's happening. So, we're also mindful, of course, of those who couldn't be here, whom we have loved, and those who have died. And Fiona and James are going to come up now, and they're going to light a candle in memory of James's dad, George. Thank you for doing that. Now, my name is Joe Armstrong, and I was honored to be asked by Fiona and James to conduct this, their humanist wedding ceremony. And humanism encourages people to think for themselves, to care for people. It's about reason, and it's about compassion, and it's inclusive. So whether you're religious, or whether you're humanist, whatever your worldview is, whatever your philosophy is, whoever you are, wherever you've traveled from, whatever you believe in, whoever you love, you're all welcome to this lovely space right here and now. And we're all united in our humanity and in our love for Fiona and James. It has been a, an utter delight from start to finish working with you as we put together your plans for this ceremony. Um, Fiona and James have themselves chosen the readings and the rituals that, that, that you're going to be part of. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy, enjoy them. Um, and the vows that you will exchange today in the presence of your family and your friends will show your love and your commitment now and for good. And, and many of you here today have a special relationship with one or with both of them, and your being here right now in this room I know is very important to Fiona and James. So on behalf of the couple, I want to thank you for all of the decisions you made just to be here right now. Now, the couple have chosen to do a little wine box ceremony, and they have here a lovely box. I hope I don't drop it and break it. <laughs> and inside the box is a bottle of 7-Up. No, no, it's a bottle of wine. It's a very nice looking bottle of wine, right? And there are also well, there's a hammer. We'll explain the hammer in a minute, right? And there, there are two love letters. So they've written a love letter to each other. Oh, I shouldn't put them in. The bride and groom have to do that. So I'm going to invite the bride and groom to come up. And what they're going to do is they're going to put the letters, the love letters. Does he know what you've written? No. Do you, does she know? No. So the sealed, unread love letters into that box, they're going to then pick up that hammer and they're going to seal the box. And the idea is that if in the first five years of their marriage they ever reach the point of, oh my God, I'm out of here, why did I ever marry you? <laughs> that instead of sort of rushing out to the divorce court, they say, hang on a bit, let's get that bottle, the box. And they drink half the wine. And then they read letters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
and then they drink the rest of the wine. Right? <laughs> and by the end of all that, of course, they say, sure, the love of my life, how could I even have thought of leaving you? And hopefully that will never happen. And so on their fifth anniversary, they'll do all that. They'll, do, they'll open that and, you know. So let's, let's do that. And don't break the bottle of wine. Just, can you come over this way, love, so, so that your guests behind can see? That's it. All right. Clap for them doing that, please. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Now, Hillary, the bride's sister. Where are you, Hillary? Hello, Hillary. You're going to come up and you're going to you're going to sing, aren't you? <laughs> oh, you're going to read. All right, come on up and read. No pressure now, you only have to read. So it's there. All right. um, love. Love is a temporary madness. It erupts like an earthquake and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your roots have become so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part. Because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness, it is not excitement. It is not the declaration of promises of eternal passion. That is just being in love, which any of us can convince ourselves we are. Love itself is what is left over when being in love has burned away, and this is both an art and a fortunate accident. You have roots that grow towards each other underground, and when all the pretty blossoms have fallen from your branches, you will find that you are one tree and not two. Love is important and you should love each other the most. Thank you very much, Hilary. Now Stephen, the groom's brother, is going to read to us. Hi. <laughs> Hello everybody, Hello. Let's take this moment in, okay, I am nothing special, just a common man with common thoughts and I've led a common life, there are no monuments dedicated to me and my name will soon be forgotten, but in one respect I have succeeded as gloriously as anyone who's ever lived, I've loved another with all my heart and soul, and to me, this has always been enough. And now, ladies and gentlemen, well, thank you, Stephen, for doing that. Well, well done. Um, and I want to introduce you to our wonderful musicians. You've heard them already, but now is my first chance to say hello to Katie and to Porrick. So long 
Park. You're hiding on me. That was beautiful. Well done. Now, Sharon, the bride sister, is going to read to us. Her. Sharon, how are you doing? Oh, maybe you're the one who was going to sing. No, definitely not. Okay. That's, that's it there. Okay. Still, Maury said, there are a few rules I know to be true about love and marriage. If you don't respect each other, you're going to have a lot of trouble. If you don't know how to compromise, you're going to have a lot of trouble. If you can't talk openly about what goes on between you, you're going to have a lot of trouble. <laughs> and if you don't have a common set of values in life, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Your values must be alike. And the biggest one of these values, Mitch, yes, your belief in the importance of marriage. He sniffed, then closed his eyes for a moment. Personally, he sighed, his eyes still closed. I think marriage is a very important thing to do. You're missing a lot if you don't try it. He ended the subject by quoting a poem he believed in like a prayer. Love each other or perish. And the final reading is going to be read by Daniel. Groom's uh, nephew. Yes. Nephew. <laughs> Sorry, can I just get this? Today is a day you will always remember, the greatest in anyone's life. You will start the day just two people in love and end it as husband and wife. It's a brand new beginning, the start of a journey, with moments to cherish and treasure. Although there'll be times when you both disagree, these will surely be outweighed by pleasure. You have heard many words of advice in the past, when the secrets of marriage were spoken. 
but you know that the answers lie hidden inside where the bonds of true love lie unbroken so live happy forever as lovers and friends it's the dawn of a new life for you as you stand there together with love in your eyes from the moment you whisper I do and with luck all your hopes and dreams can be real may success find its way to your heart tomorrow can bring you the greatest of joys but today is the day it all starts Wonderful, thank you. It's a lovely choice of readings. I loved your, your readings. Um, the, the first one there was, you know, love is a decision. It's a decision and it's inconceivable that you should ever part and that you have roots which are growing ever more deeply towards each other so that you end up being one tree and not two. And then the second reading that Stephen read about I have succeeded as gloriously as anyone who's ever lived. I have loved another with all my heart and soul. And to me, that has always been enough. I love that. I haven't heard that reading before, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, it's not about money. It's not about success. It's not about any of those things. It's about love. And if you've loved somebody um, at the end of your life, then life has been meaningful and worthwhile. Um, and then we had uh, Sharon and all that about uh, you know, respect and compromise and talk openly and, and share your values. And the biggest one of those, your belief in the importance of your marriage. And I think that's a really important one. That what you're doing here publicly is you're committing yourselves to the love that you have for one another and you're making it the anchor of your lives and that all of the decisions you make as a couple and individually will be in that context from here on in. And then love, love each other or perish. And, uh, and then the fourth one Daniel's reading about is a new, a new beginning. It's, it is the start of your married lives together, the dawn of a new life for you. And today, the day your married lives start. Um, you mentioned when we met that uh, James, that you, oh yeah, that you, once upon a time, once upon a time, all store, good stories begin with once upon a time. Once upon a time in London, Fiona was the landlady of a bar. <laughs> and James's local, James's local was closed down. He loves pool. In fact, it says he's obsessed by pool. Oh, obsessed by pool. I'm sure that's an exaggeration. And Fiona agreed to take them in as their new pool team. Now, you'll understand, I'm only given little, little, little cameos, and you have the rest of the day to, to find out the bits that are missing. But we go from that to Fiona saw James dancing. Now, I've never seen anybody dancing on top of a pool table, but maybe. Anyway, you saw him dancing. And uh, the word is that you're kind of a good dancer. <laughs> well, Fiona thinks he is. <laughs> anyway, there's something here about that was the dance, or is that was that dance. Okay, find out later, folks. <laughs> and immediately that night, there was a lock in. <laughs> Not that you were locked, no. but a lock in. Yes. Why was there a lock in? They didn't want to go home. They didn't want to go home. Okay, so there was a lock in, and 15 people to begin with. And then it sort of trickled down from 15. And imagine it got down to just two left, and here are those two today. <laughs> So any of Fiona and James, may your marriage flourish and may your love continue to grow uh, amidst life as it comes at you with its difficulty and pain and suffering and, and sorrow and with its joy and wonder and consolation and creativity. That's enough of that. Now, ceremony of light. So the next little ritual, we have 
three candles here in the middle of the table that are not lit. And I'm going to invite um, Fiona's mom, Olive, and James's mom, Mary, to come up and to light a candle for their daughter and their son. And then Fiona and James will light their marriage candle, taking the flames from the candles lit for them by their mammies. All right, so. Clap for the mummies. <laughs> would you like to do your vows? I would. <laughs> that was very definite. I would. <laughs> so could I invite you to just stand up, please? And yeah, you just pull the chairs back. That's it. Good. And you might just move a little bit away from the table. Okay. And, and <laughs> Very good. Excellent. And you, you, can, you can hold hands or whatever, and, and, and here we go. So we now come to the most important part of this ceremony, where we'll be asking Fiona and James to speak the words which, in the presence of this lovely gathering of family and friends, will seal their union. But before we get to the vows, I have to ask them if they know of any impediment to their marriage. James, do you know of any impediment to your marriage to Fiona? I know of no impediment to my marriage to Fiona. <laughs> and Fiona, do you know of any impediment to your marriage to James? I know of no impediment to my marriage to James. Sort of a great forthrightness and certainty. <laughs> so here we go then. Do you want to sort of turn to one another and hold hands? And... So do you, James, see take Fiona Moore to be your wife, to share a relationship of love, tenderness, and laughter, to confide in and trust above all others, to respect and stand by her in everything as an equal partner, but above all else, to love and cherish her. I do. And do you, Fiona Moore, take James C. to be your husband, to share a relationship of love, tenderness, and laughter, to confide in and trust above all others, to respect and stand by him in everything as an equal partner, but above all else, to love and cherish him? I do. From now on, your individuality will be matched by our mutuality, your sharing of all your joys and sorrows in life. And we're now going to do a little Celtic wedding ritual, which is the origin of the phrase tying the knot. And some um, younger people are going to come up and assist us to do this when I call their name. So Fiona and James, will you honour and respect one another and seek never to break that honour? We, we will. will. 
And Laura, Fiona's niece, where's Laura? Come on, Laura. Take your time, there's no rush. Own the stage, make the most of it, okay? Good girl, Laura. So Laura's taking the first ribbon and she's gonna tie the first knot. Now you see why it's called tying the knot. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Oh, no. <laughs> also, and Fiona and James, will you uh, support one another, another, especially at difficult times and at trials and sadness, and always seek to show understanding and compassion? Yeah. We will. And now Jack is going to... Hi, Jack. So Jack is going to take the second ribbon and he's going to, aren't you? Whichever one you like. And tie the, and tie the second knot. Thanks, Jake. Smile. Can you give us a kiss after this? That's it. Don't worry about That's the knot. Right. You can just sort of drape right. it around. That's, That's it. Okay. That's lovely. That's great. Thanks very much. Well done. Thank you, Jack. And will you, will you commit to listening to one another, and, and not just the words, but the feelings behind the words, and to accepting yourself and your spouse as you are? We will. We will. And now Kate, Fiona's niece, is going to take the next ribbon and tie the next knot. with the green one. Good girl. <laughs> and uh, will you share each other's laughter and always look for the brightness and positive in each other? We will. We will. And now Sophie is going to take the fourth ribbon and tie the fourth knot. Very good. Thank you, Sophie. And, um, and now Hannah will take the last ribbon and, and, and tie... Oh, and, and that's right. Yeah. And Sarah. Sarah. That's cool. Good. Thank you, Sarah. So Fiona and James, as your hands are well and truly bound together now, so your lives are joined in a union of love and trust. Above you are the stars, below you is the earth, and like the stars, your love will be a constant source of light, and like the earth, a firm foundation upon which to grow. And you're holding the hands of your best friend, young, strong, and full of love for you on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today and always. And these are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. The hands that will continue to love you and cherish you through the years and with the slightest touch will comfort you like nobody else. And the hands that will hold you at times of fear or grief. And the hands that will wipe tears from your eyes and tears of sorrow and tears of joy the hands that will love the children in your lives, and the hands that will help you to hold your family as one, and the hands that will give you strength when you need it. And last, these are the hands that even when you are old will still be reaching for yours, still giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. Lee, did the rings come back? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> so, um, would you just take the ribbons? Yeah, you do a Houdini now and get out of those. Thank you. That's lovely. Thanks very much. Hold mine then. So, um, 
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for chemically altering these rings with your best wishes and prayers for Fiona and James. Um, so, James, take this ring and place it on Fiona's finger and repeat after me. Yeah. I, James. I, James. Take you, Fiona. Take you, Fiona. To be my wife. To be my wife. And with this ring. And with this ring. I marry you. I marry you. And join my life to yours. And join my life to yours. And Fiona, take this ring and place it on James's finger and repeat after me. I, Fiona. <laughs> I, Fiona. Take you, James. Take you, James. To be my husband. To be my husband. And with this ring. And with this ring. I marry you. I marry you. And join my life to yours. And join my life to yours. So the circle is a symbol for the sun, the earth, and the universe, a symbol of wholeness and of peace. And in the form of a ring, may it stand for you both as a symbol for your love for one another, looking both inwards and outwards an embrace that binds without imprisoning and a support that reassures without restricting. And the wedding bands that Fiona and James have exchanged are confirmation of the vows that they have made. So Fiona and James, you have accepted each other. You have consented to join your lives. You have committed yourselves to each other by the exchanging of rings. And in the presence of this lovely gathering of family and friends, I pronounce you husband and wife. That was some applause. Well done, thank you very much. You are going to have a great party tonight. Uh, Fiona and James, go forward in your life together with the good wishes of those who love you ringing in your ears. Go forward to life of joy and fulfillment, of tolerance and peace, living your lives and your marriage with reason and compassion. Remember this, your wedding day. Those who came to wish you well, the words that you've spoken, the emotions that you feel, and the rings which symbolize all the meaning of this occasion. May your love never die, rather may it deepen and continue to grow so that you may be forever as you are now, cherishing your love and always glad to be married to one another. So we're now going to sign the register, so if the witnesses would join us up here, please. I mean, while Katie and Porrick will entertain us with more music. Thank you.
Wasp is living dangerously. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, so I just want to take a minute to thank um, some people. First and foremost, our wonderful musician, musicians, uh, uh, Pork and Katie Hughes. <laughs> and our wonderful readers, uh, Stephen, Daniel, Sharon, and Hilary. And uh, the lovely parents, Mary, Olive, and Dave. Yeah. Um, who else do we have? Oh, the, the children who did the, the ribbon tying. Jack, Sophie, uh, Laura, Kate, Hannah, and Sarah. <laughs> the gorgeous uh, maid of honor and bridesmaids, Catherine, Sabrina, and Emma. And straight off the set of Pulp Fiction, we have the best man, uh, Lee, and the groomsmen, David and Richard. Yeah. Looking very sharp indeed. And uh, our wonderful photographers, uh, Paul and Ursula, and videographer, Jerry and Maria. And the st management staff here at uh, Cliff at Lions will be looking after you all day. And there's Michella, and there are loads of them. So give them a big, big clap. <laughs> Last, but by no means least, your, you guests have been wonderful. And thank you for your participation and your clapping and your howling and all that kind of stuff. You'll have a great old party tonight. So give yourselves the biggest clap of all. there right so one final little thing to do and if I may please ask you to oh well I suppose I want to have a look at this it's a broom okay yeah. it's a broom and if I may ask you please to be upstanding and if we could pull the chairs well out away of the way yeah Just don't 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 burn the bright on that so ladies and oh yeah, so we're going to end this ceremony. Oh, I have to put it down, don't I? I was really forgetting. It's so beautiful, I didn't want to leave it at all. So we have a broom. So we have a groom and we have a broom. So we end this lovely wedding ceremony with the tradition of jumping the broom. And as our bride and groom jump the broom, they cross the threshold into marriage. And it marks the beginning of making a... Um, their lives together as a, as a married couple symbolizes sweeping away of the old, sweeping away of all negative energy, and making way for all good things to come into your lives. And the bride and groom will now begin their new life together with clean sweep. Yeah. But before, sorry, my fault, my fault, I misled you. Before they take that leap, I am delighted and excited to present to you for the very first time the newly married couple, Mr. and Mrs. C. Yeah.